I'm back with Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 10, Episode 10, Storming Out. Let me say, I'm happy that I am actually not <clears throat> having a drink getting through 15 reviews because I can guarantee you by the 15th one, my ass would be fucking total fuck up and probably wouldn't be able to articulate myself just drinking on water. <laughs> so we have Portia, uh, her, um, I believe it's her grandfather's organization, Hosea Feeds the Hungry and Homeless, doing that in Houston. Shamia saw the post of what she's doing online. She calls her, pretty much said, if you need any help, any support, if I can give, let me know, I'll do that. Cynthia is doing an event uh, in Houston. And it's something more or less just to, you know, try to lift people's spirits. Which, you know, sometimes that's all you need is just a distraction off of what the fuck is going on. She talks with Candy. Candy pretty much letting her like, look. <clears throat> Not that she doesn't want to support Cynthia, because the big focus is poor. She's like, look, I've already donated money, not just to organizations, but to individual families. And at this point, I need to spend time with my children. Can't be mad for that. <clears throat> so, Sheree, she's talking to her boo thing, brings up Nene. He's trying to figure out like why she's bringing me up. Be, like is she still married and pretty much said that they had a thing going on and she's not sure if that was during the time that her and Greg were or weren't divorced and everything and it would be smart to not bring him up I'm leading that way it's that we can and Riley block calls block is happy because he's about to have a son and he is so ecstatic he's talking to Riley about it uh while um Candy is there, and right before that, you know, Candy was trying to teach her how to drive because I think she has her permit, I believe. <clears throat> and Riley is feeling a little distant with set conversation, and Candy's trying to figure out, like, you know, what's going on. And they go inside, and I don't think they necessarily had, they might have had cameras in there or probably was waiting to record that, but as soon as they go in, Riley begins to cry. Candy doesn't know why. You have Todd asking what's wrong, and it was so sad when baby. It was like Riley, it, like it was, it was sad. Like I was holding back from fucking crying because that shit was fucking sad. And I think what it is, even though Riley wasn't able to articulate it, and even Candy went and spoke with Block after, like after the fact, sometime after, and recommends they do counseling. <clears throat> but I think the issue is that it's hard to have a relationship with someone or like this be your father and they never really show an invested interest in you you're trying to build something but they're more excited about a child they're about to bring into this world but they didn't have that same you know zest enthusiasm about you and that could be it but i'm not sure i'm not riley that's all i can speculate <clears throat> Cynthia hosts a benefit concert. Shamia, Portia, and Lauren is there. Also, uh, Cynthia's sister, Mel, is there. They raise some money. They live spirits. Kenya shows up, and Kenya surprises Cynthia. Now, Cynthia had already said, <clears throat> I don't know if this was later on in there when she came out, but Cynthia had said that, you know, if um, <clears throat> Portia supports me, I'll come to her event. Right? So... Portia and Shamia, Portia doesn't, uh, they're trying to talk things out. Portia doesn't want to necessarily rehash things. She just want to move past things. I don't really know how the fuck I feel about that. But Shamia apologized for not being sympathetic about her condition. But it's funny that, you know, your condition did not stop you from coming to fuck down to Houston and doing all this other shit. But that's not here nor there. I'm not, I'm not trying to poke holes, but I'm just saying. They kiss, they make up, that's it. <clears throat> Kenya is doing uh, Habitat for Humanity. Portia feels a way that um, Cynthia is going to be with her friend instead of kind of um, holding up to her end of the bargain. But we find out later in the episode that um, <clears throat> Portia had an event before Cynthia had hers. <clears throat> and you know and at the same exact time Cynthia did say look you need to be happy that anybody decided to come the fuck down here with your ass plus it's bigger than you but I understand the principle of things where it's like you promised to do this but you didn't but whatever so <clears throat> see what I do 
Portia wanted Shamia to go help out with uh, the event kind of like you're going in place of me. Now, <clears throat> Kenya was Kenya was on one. I didn't even see him for I I, I I like Kenya. I like a hell of a lot more than I like Portia, but <clears throat> you had uh, Cynthia wanted to take a water break and whatnot. Kenya like we ain't got time for that. Kenya is in the midst of working. Shamia called trying to get directions and whatnot. You know, I guess a specific location. Kenya's like, look, call call one of the volunteers. I'm busy. Hung up. I know how that came off, but I will say this. I understand it. Because <clears throat> like when I'm in work mode, like when I am dead focused, I don't have time for other bullshit. I don't have time to be sitting there trying to talk to somebody because I have a job that I need to get done. And you even kind of saw that with Kenya when she did her PSA. Like, when she's in work mode, she's in work mode. Kenya's whole thing is, I ain't come down here to look pretty and shit. I came down here to physically make an impact and get my damn hands dirty. And that's what her mindset was at. So I can't be mad about it. I can't be mad about her telling Cynthia, you can't take a water break. With my fucking background, hey, if a motherfucking job gotta get done, we gotta, we got a motherfucking job to get done. Like, like, leave your feelings over there. Let's get this shit done. Let's just fucking get done with it. So I understand. That's just me, but we can agree or disagree on the shit, right? <clears throat> Porsche's at her event. She had even said earlier in the uh, episode that she wanted to have more food than um, what she may or may not need because the worst thing is run out of food. And just kind of put it on me for a second. I do understand because I was at a friend's house for um, for New Year's. And, you know, they had actually had me over for Thanksgiving. So I felt that it would only be nice for me to you know, go over to their house, actually supply the food and actually cook everything to kind of say, you know, thank you for being so hospitable. We had a ton, we had tons of food and they even look like, what the fuck? But I even said, I'd rather make more and, you know, we just have leftovers than, because I didn't know if they were going to have any other people over or whatnot. Like, I would hate for other people to have came over and there wasn't enough. Because that isn't like, that's the worst thing for anybody that cooks is to sit here and cr make food and there not be enough for other people. So I understood. They was able to reach out, get some more food. And you know, it was it was a good event. So kudos to uh, Porsche for that. So we got Shamia, Porsche, Lauren, and Cynthia in mail. So they're down eating dinner. Lauren begins to act as uh, Portia's mouthpiece and I think the only reason that she did that is since Portia's already not in good standings with everybody she wanted to take the heat off her but if y'all ever peep game she always does that it's similar to how Candy's group is where Candy's you know people are her mouthpiece same thing in this situation and she says that they were disappointed that she didn't come and Mel had mentioned, okay, well, we came to the first event. And and I like that Mel did it, which is like, okay, well, since Portia don't want to sit here and speak up for herself, I'll inter I'll be, you know, intervene and speak up for my sister. So I ain't see a problem with that. Lauren and Portia, you know, um, they harp on this friendship thing, but it's just like y'all ain't fucking friends. You know, so and I get said this whole thing is like be happy. I came down here to fucking help you because you see none of the other women did. So, Shamia talks about vibes and talks about Kenya's attitude. Kenya shows up late. They, uh, the restaurant that they were at had already stopped. Uh, like, the kitchen was already closed. So, you had Shamia. <clears throat> She's, um, let me see. She, she had said, yeah, you know, she, you know, she made it look easy, but it was really hard talking to Kenya. She mentions how, you know, she felt that they were going. Kenya was like, well, you know, I, I thought we were too. But you also got to remember that Shamia is Horsha's best friend. And typically, if one friend don't like somebody, typically, not always, the best friend is not going to like that person just off, you know, GP. Just like, all right, well, shit, my friend don't like you, so I don't fucking like you. So we're not going to sit and pretend like they always had a great standing relationship and Kenya is pretty much trying to tell like you know what it wasn't it wasn't all that you know if it is my bad but it's sitting now from my standpoint it seemed like Shamia was trying to have a moment it seemed like she was trying to secure peach Kenya every time like okay oh, I get a water ask can I get two and then you even had Shamia like oh bring two pitches so you know I don't get interrupted and all this other stuff 
and Shamia decides she wants to keep pushing it and Kenya gets up and walks away and Kenya is talking with the producers and you can see in this moment that Kenya's whole thing is she's trying not to go that route that she has been down so many different times and we're not going to pretend like this season they have not tried to bait Kenya into trying to you know like snap the fuck off we ain't gonna pretend like that shit never happened because it did <clears throat> and she's going off saying fuck these bitches I don't care about these bitches this that and third and I wonder when was this tape because if y'all recall Bravo is notorious for taking shit that they just recorded and trying to put it off as some shit that they've recorded like that happened way back when so I don't really know about the whole editing thing, but she's mad and she even said like, y'all wonder why Mark don't want to come around, but look at how y'all treating his wife, they said third, so she's going off about that. Has every fucking reason to be mad. Portia tries to come in and Portia, and Kenya flips off the camera, she's like, this is not a moment, you know, because it almost seemed like, okay, she's trying to have a moment that's not the case. She's ready to go. <clears throat> Cynthia. I guess it's trying to extend the scene. The only thing that I can think of is they had a time limit to sit here and try to, you know, film. I guess maybe they need that time limit. And can you pretty much try to tell, like, I ain't got time for this right now. So they want to continue to talk. She rolled the fucking window up and pulled it off. Was it disrespectful? Yeah. Can I be mad at Kenya? No, only because if I don't feel like talking about some shit, we not finna talk about some shit. <laughs> I, I am that big of an asshole. So, was it right? No. But do I understand Kenya? Yeah. So, hey, that's all I got. Y'all let me know how y'all feel. I probably didn't upset some of y'all, but that's okay. We can agree to disagree. I'm going to see y'all right back for Love Hip Hop New York. <laughs>